What's up everyone? 2018 got off to a bit of a slow start, but if you thought you weren't going to have anything to play in February, think again. I'm here to count down my top 10 video games coming out in February 2018. The first title I want to talk about is an indie game called The Station. An atmospheric adventure, its developers describe the game as a first-person sci-fi mystery set on a space station built to study a sentient alien civilization. Problem is, the space station has gone radio silent and nobody knows why. That's where you come in. As a recon specialist, it's up to you to locate the crew and find out what happened. You can pick up items and interact with machinery in order to solve puzzles, and along the way you'll discover AR video diaries that reveal what happened to those on board. The sense of mystery aims to keep you hooked, but the story aims to do more, covering moral issues such as the impacts of imperialism on an interstellar scale and the ethics of surveillance. Could it be that even you are being watched as you venture deeper into the station? We'll have to wait and see. For adventure purists, especially those with a taste for sci-fi, this sounds like a must-play, and at just $14.99, it could definitely be worth a try. The Station releases for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on February 20th. When Konami and Metal Gear creator Hideo Kojima parted ways, it was widely viewed that Kojima was grossly mistreated. Then, Konami did what many felt was at the very least unfortunate. They announced Metal Gear Survive, a pure survival game that looked to have little or nothing to do with the Metal Gear universe. Was it a cash grab? Could this game exist without the Metal Gear name? Maybe. But now that the dust has settled, some people who've actually played it say it's, well, fun. The game drops you into an alternate reality overrun by zombie-like creatures named Wanderers. Side note, when did it become against the rules to just call them zombies? Anyways, it's up to you to fend them off in any way you can. You've got to harvest food, craft items, conserve ammo, and build a base from which to survive. It's worth noting that while Konami is keen on advertising this game as a co-op experience, it does have a single-player campaign. Part of what seems to make it enjoyable are the stealth and combat mechanics, which were taken directly from the Phantom Pain, so you know they're rock solid. Ultimately, if co-op is your thing and you can look past the whole Hideo Kojima fiasco, it looks like there might be a game here worth playing, especially at just $39.99. Metal Gear Survive ships for PS4, Xbox One, and PC on February 20th. One of two VR titles on this list Apex Construct is what you might get if Horizon Zero Dawn and The Witness decided to get it on with an M.C. Escher drawing. Its surreal, colorful, and imaginative world just begs to be explored, which is exactly what I want from a VR game. And best of all, it's not just a tech demo. This is a full-length, single-player adventure. As for the gameplay, you wield a bow and arrow to take out robotic enemies that now dominate the broken landscape thanks to humankind's failed experiments told you this game had some horizon in it. As you learn to defend yourself, you have to solve puzzles to uncover exactly what led to the fall of humanity. If all that sounds good, but you're prone to motion sickness, fret not. The game features several modes of movement, including teleportation mode. Apex Construct releases for PSVR on February 20th, as well as on Vive and Oculus a month later on March 20th. Next, we see one of 2016's best indie games for PC come to consoles. When Owlboy was initially released, it was met with near-universal praise. This must have come as a relief to developer D-Pad Studio because crafting this game's open world took nearly 10 years. Seriously, they started working on this game in 2007, but the extra time paid off. The writing is great, the visuals are rich and detailed, and the controls are tight. You play as Otis an owl-human hybrid who has the ability to fly, roll, and spin around the map, but that's about it. To fully explore the world, you must rely on other characters in the game, each of whom has their own weapon that provides you with the means to reach previously inaccessible areas. As you trudge on, you encounter bosses and several one-off gameplay segments that keep things interesting. 
Graphically, the game is beautiful and has an aesthetic reminiscent of some of the better looking Sega Genesis titles of the 90s. Think Echo the Dolphin, but set in the sky instead of the sea. But if there's one area where this game outclasses nearly every 16-bit game, it's the music. The soundtrack is absolutely gorgeous. All in all, if you like 2D platforming with a retro flair and can't resist a vivid world to explore, Owlboy is a must-play. It releases February 13th. If I'm being honest, Kingdom Come Deliverance looks like a LARPer's wet dream. The developers, Warhorse Studios, have set out to create the most realistic medieval role-playing game they could imagine. That means they ditched magic, dragons, and potions and opted instead for a historically accurate world with combat to match. You play a blacksmith seeking to avenge his family's death in what is now the Czech Republic during the early 15th century. As you explore the world, you uncover the story by searching for clues, talking to, and often killing, NPCs, and venturing into unexplored territories. As for the combat, it makes up a large portion of the gameplay and it's meant to be as treacherous as the real thing. In fact, the devs have promised, or rather warned, that players can expect an initial degree of difficulty on par with the Dark Souls games. While the animations here are fluid, Few games have truly nailed realistic first-person melee combat, and it remains to be seen how Deliverance will fare in this department. Let's hope for the best. Look for Kingdom Come Deliverance on PS4, Xbox One, and PC on February 13th. Bayonetta 2 and the original Bayonetta are two of developer Platinum Games' most beloved titles, the latter of which is one of the best-reviewed action games of all time. Unfortunately, not many people got to play it because it was only released for the fledgling Wii U. But now both are coming to the Nintendo Switch on February 16th. For the uninitiated, Bayonetta is named after the main character, a strong, sexy witch who wields four pistols and fights the Angels of Heaven in epic, bizarre, and over-the-top battles. And oh, what battles they are. Just take a look. And these games aren't your typical button smashers either. You're rewarded for experimenting, discovering new combos, and developing your reaction time. This is made even more satisfying because neither Bayonetta title holds your hand along the way, meaning you can take full credit for that breathtaking combo you can't believe you just pulled off. And the cherry on top? a supremely satisfying slow motion mechanic that makes you feel even more badass every time. In addition to the single player campaign, there's also online multiplayer and co-op. Now we just have to wait until Bayonetta 3. Crossing Souls has the potential to be one of the coolest games of 2018, if not one of the best. It's an action-adventure that takes inspiration from 80s flicks like The Goonies and E.T., with gameplay that draws heavily from the original Legend of Zelda. I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like a dream game. The story begins with five teenagers who discover a mysterious stone that enables them to communicate with the afterlife. Using the stone then becomes integral to the gameplay as you're constantly tasked with solving puzzles that straddle both the land of the living and the land of the dead. As you explore the world, you find levels akin to the dungeons in the early Zelda games. In each level, you solve puzzles, fight enemies, and defeat a unique boss from the realm of the dead. And one more thing, if the top-down visuals aren't 80s enough for you, the cutscenes are inspired by 80s cartoons like He-Man and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's definitely got the look, now it just needs to deliver on the gameplay. Crossing Souls is coming to PS4, Vita, PC, and Mac on February 13th. When the ex-Bungie developers at Polyart Games decided to create a PSVR game, one thing they all agreed was essential was that it transport players to a magical place. When you first arrive in the world of Moss, it's nearly impossible to argue that they haven't succeeded at doing just that. And don't for a minute let the cutesy protagonist fool you. This is no Lucky's Tale. Moss showcases a level of charm, an attention to detail, and a variety of VR mechanics that just might make it one of the few VR games players can genuinely enjoy for hours on end. 
even those susceptible to motion sickness. And that little mouse? Her name is Quill. You help her on her adventure by solving environmental puzzles and defeating dangerous foes. The game is broken up into smaller areas, which the developers call rooms, each of which contains either a puzzle, a platforming challenge, a group of baddies, or a combination of the three. As you help Quill advance, she interacts with you, creating a bond that may seem silly at first, but is hard to ignore the further in the game you progress. Moss has the potential to be something pretty special, so check it out this February 27th on PlayStation VR. Up next is a gorgeous game by developer Zoink Games and funded by Electronic Arts named Fea, and yep, that's how you pronounce it. Anyhow, Fea is a platforming adventure in which you run, climb, and fly your way through a strikingly colorful and surreal Nordic forest. The gameplay features a semi-open world and leans heavily on exploration and discovery. At the risk of using an overused term, even the developers have called it Metroidvania-esque. To open new areas, including ancient ruins, a gigantic elder tree, and tons of secrets, you have to sing to different flora and fauna throughout the forest. Each plant and animal that hears your song will give you a new ability or open up the map for further exploration. And if you think the graphics are beautiful, this game has the audio to match. The music and sound effects have a relaxing, almost meditative quality that accent the visuals perfectly. If you like exploration and pretty things, Fea might be for you. It's set for release on February 16th for the Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC for $19.99. Shadow of the Colossus remains as beloved today as when it initially stunned gamers in 2005 with its cinematic battles, epic landscapes, and eloquent, poetic storytelling. Its sense of scale and emotive power remain unmatched for many gamers. That is, hopefully, until now. The remake looks to bring the classic into the current generation not only by rebuilding the entire game world from the ground up in vivid detail, but also by upgrading the outdated controls. In addition to the original controls, Bluepoint Games has included the option to use a new, more contemporary control scheme, which they tout as superior, especially for players who never experienced the original game. Other upgrades include enhanced bow aiming, improved camera mechanics, and new character animations, all of which, the developers say, make the game feel more fluid than the original. For heaven's sake, let's hope they're right. They say don't judge a book by its cover, but dang it, this game looks spectacular especially on a PS4 Pro. Let's hope it plays just as well. Shadow of the Colossus ships on February 6th. Well, there you have it, everyone. My top 10 video games coming out in February 2018. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you want to see more content just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.